Greetings and welcome back everyone to Alan Wake's American Nightmare. When we last left off, we were told to go scout out to the diner because Mr. Scratch might have been over there when he was partying. He was like, whoop whoop, up in here, we're gonna go party and stuff like that. And then he had a big kerfuffle or something like that. And now the diner isn't so nice of a place, so we might find something interesting over there. So we're heading over there, simple as that. So um, Alan Wake's American Nightmare seems to be a uh, relatively more open world than the original Alan Wake was. A poltergeist. Its existence is one of rage and hostility, and its very presence turns ordinary objects into deadly projectiles. Oh, so deadly. So deadly. Oh God, look at the, the poltergeist. It's deadly. It's deadly, you guys. Oh, so deadly. I'm dead. No, I'm not. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, it seems to be more of a open worldish sort of thing. How, like, you can go wherever you want, kind of. Like, right now, we can just go explore this whole little area and find some manuscript pages and all that. In the original Alan Wake, you were kind of blocked off by random mountains that just so happened to get in, a, get in your way. So it seems like they're trying to make it more open worldish, kind of, which is interesting because um, originally Alan Wake, the original game, was intended to be an open world game, and then they made it linear instead, which is very interesting since um, you know it's not open world, you know. The scene, traces of violence, a callous midnight snack, a room key left carelessly behind. The man recognizes the enemy's handiwork. I think these are keys for the motel rooms. Satellite and now this? That place might be involved. It might be. It very well might be. So let's see what's around here. See if we can't find anything a little a little interesting around here. Mm-hmm. Anything? No, actually. There's nothing back here. Wow, okay. This is not, not even like a coffee thermos, like in the original Alan Wake. Which may have very well been like a little um, thing that they left in when they swapped it from an open world game into a linear game. Because, you know, coffee thermoses don't really make that much sense for a linear game. Stone was a believer in a great many things, most of which were entirely fallacious. Emma Sloan, an innocent victim of his dark half. More collateral damage in the ongoing war. Damned by forces beyond her control as much as by her own actions. So wait, you told her to stay in the light, but they have the ability to turn off the light? Like her light got destroyed. So what was the purpose of staying in the light if the light is useless? God damn it, Wake, you may have very well just gotten her killed. Good job, mate. Good job. Oh, hold on, it's you! Get out of here! Gotta just shoot this guy a few more times and he should be gone. We gotta make sure that we don't use the little, little light. There we go. Easy does it. So that's the guy that we can just point the flashlight out and then uh, split him up or we can just take down one big bad dude. I see, I, uh, I think I prefer fighting just one big bad dude instead of having to aim at multiple little guys. Because it's essentially the same thing, you're just spreading them out. Alright, what's over here? Motel rooms. Let's explore this one. What have you got for me? Anything interesting? Hello? Nope. Locked. Okay. Well, time to go do the other thing. I like how you can still see, like, the burning bits of the building over there. That's kind of cute. So let's, uh, explore this room. Hopefully there's something interesting. Can I get the SMG? I can. I didn't even realize I got three manuscript pages. <laughs> Very funny, Wake. Very funny. Alright, what's in here? Hmm? What have you got in here, huh? What are you hiding from me? Huh? You lost something? Apparently not, it's just a bed. Wow, okay. That's a, just a motel room, really. Okay then. Third time's a charm. Damn. Michael Faraby, dead, tortured, dressed in clothes that bore the name of a local observatory. A slim lead, but solid enough. It stirs something deep in his mind. He knows where to go now. I guess that'll have to be my next stop. Why did they let us examine that if if it's just telling us exactly the same thing that the narrator told us? He knows his next stop should be the observatory. I guess the observatory should be my next stop. What is the point? Hmm. 
the observatory, hot on the heels of the Herald of Darkness, the Champion of Light forges on to see the stars. An observatory, a place for a man to witness the magnificence of the universe. But such insights are not what the champion of light is looking for. He has come to find a weapon. Open the observatory gate, you've got it game, you've got it. Okay. Oh, it's just simple as that. Okay, then. We still had the keys. All oh, right, we still had the keys. That's all right. Well, that's convenient, I suppose. Welcome back, listeners. As you know, I'm Eddie Rodman, and I'm still talking to old gods of Asgard who are doing their big comeback tour. How's that been going for you? Odin? Splendid! I'm having the time of my life! You know, I didn't realize how much I missed that. And what about you, Tor? Ah, it's okay, you know. Well, this must bring back a lot of memories. Oh, yeah! It's wonderful to be back on stage. If it wasn't for my knee, <laughs> I'd feel like a young man again. <laughs> well, speaking of that, I hate to keep harping on this age thing, but I gotta tell you, I've heard your new songs, guys, and you sound really good. Thank you! And, uh, this may be a touchy subject, but to be blunt, you really don't sound, uh, well, old. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, the difference between your, your speaking voice and your singing voice, it's pretty striking. What the hell are you talking about? You saying it's not us singing on that record? What? What's he talking about? No, 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 I'm not saying that, guys, but I, I can't help noticing the difference. Son, you're on thin ice. You calling me a liar? Well, hey, let me just step in here for a moment, boys. Yeah, hey, they do sound different. But believe me, we're not talking Milli Vanilli here. These guys are the real deal. Why don't you come to the gig tomorrow night and see for yourself? Once they get on that stage, boom, things get real. Really? Believe me, they play like they're possessed. It's almost like magic. Look, you see my boys play, you see the old gods for real. These guys project a lot of power. They're not lightweights, you know what I'm saying? All right, Barry, I'll, I'll see if I can make it. Now, let's take another quick break here, and after that, we'll play the new Old Gods of Asgard single. Don't you go away. Don't you tell me what to do, I'm going away. Screw you. Oh, great. Just what I wanted. All right, where's the manuscript page over here? Somewhere, there it is, LL. Now, they've actually changed the manuscript pages to make them look kind of cute. As a storyteller, my first real love was crime. And it was in that genre that I finished my first novel, starring the perpetually miserable Alex Casey, whose entire life was a wound that never healed. The books sold as fast as they hit the shelves. I wrote five more Alex Casey books, and they all were bestsellers. I became rich. I became famous. Success brought pressure, and I didn't handle it very well. Uh, Alex Casey is supposed to be this reality's version of Max Payne because this game is developed by Remedy Entertainment and the writer of it, Sam Legg, he also wrote Max Payne and that's sort of him just talking about Max Payne or something like that and how it, I don't know, I assume how it took him like forever to make a success to it because he essentially killed off, um, like in the main game they explain that Alex Casey was killed off because they wanted to just be something special, and that gave Alan Wake some... That gave Alan Wake, like, um, writer's block, essentially, and I suppose that's supposed to be referencing the fact that uh, Sam Lake, in uh, real life, he uh, had something like that when doing Alan Wake, since it took fucking millions of years for this game to come out. Like, it came... Well, um, it took, like, Alan Wake, I think, like, five or six years to come out. And yeah, that was pretty, it was pretty insane. So I assume that's sort of him just talking about how he had trouble trying to go away from Max Payne because Max Payne 1 was made by Remedy and Sam Lake, but Max Payne 2 was made by Apogee Software and Rockstar, I think, something like that. I think Apogee Software was just a consultant. Um, they're not relevant anymore at all, so just pretty much forget about them. Um, so, yeah, it's basically just them talking about that, and also there's the whole, yeah, I was just gonna, like, I didn't even want to actually talk about the fact that 
like the actual thing. Like, oops, sorry. I wanted to just talk about the fact that they've changed how how the manuscripts are read. Instead of just being a big white blank page like in the original Alan Wake, they have this sort of little cinematic thing going on where they read it as it goes down and stuff like that. And that's really cute and clever, and that's really nice. Um, so yeah, that's my main point. I just, I, 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 I sorry, I, I got on a tangent about Max Payne and Alan Wake and Sam like and bleh. Hello? I'm Dr. Rachel Meadows and... Wait a moment, it's you! I can't believe you dare show your face around here again. I can't believe you dare show your face around here again. How dare you? She sounds like a fucking piece of wood. No, no, actually no. I've heard pieces of... I've heard blocks of wood sound more expressive than her. I can't believe you dare show your face around here. Oh no, it's just awful. So bad. Hello? Hello? It says enter the main observatory. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, but where did you come from? Go away. It wasn't me. I just look like him. Are you serious? That's what you're going with? Please! I'm trying to stop him. You saw those shadow things trying to kill me, right? I bet he got along with them just fine. Yes. Yes, he did. All right. Come on in. Thank you. Oh, lovely. Oh, hey. This is going to be a little cutscene thing. Hey, buddy. I figured I'd take a moment to talk to you. There's a party next door. I'm feeling pretty good right now. A little beer, a little fun, you know? It's nice. Listen, this whole thing between us, it's a little weird for me too, you know? I mean, we don't just look the same, there's a lot we share. I mean, up here. I know you, right? So I was thinking maybe we could... These guys are getting out of control. Look, I feel like we're both victims of circumstance here. And maybe we could make some kind of effort to... Lovely. He looks like a nice little fellow. Doc, oh, Doctor Scratch, Mister Scratch, whatever. Doctor Meadows, Mister Meadows. I'll send the lift down to you. I didn't expect to see anyone here tonight, but I'm relieved to see an actual person. That's assuming this isn't some kind of cool trick on your part, of course. So it looks like they did away with the coffee furnaces. That's kind of interesting how they would get rid of that, since you know, obviously that was everyone's favorite part about the original Alan Wake, Alan Wake game, collecting those coffee furnaces. 